Well, welcome to our Better Together Tuesday podcast. I'm here with Todd Marcy, the pastor of Life Groups, and I'm Carrie Carpenter, the director of care and women's ministries. And we wanted to talk today about how we are better together in Life Groups. That's great, Carrie. It's fun to be together and uh, just look at um, some certain aspects throughout this year about uh, being better together. And um, today we want to take time to look at some of those obstacles and barriers that we might have toward uh, joining community and life group. Uh, a lot of times we, we hear about this invitation to, to be a part of a group that we're maybe not connected to, maybe we don't know the people, and so it's a, a totally blind situation. And, and there are barriers that we can have that keep us from moving forward into to joining community. And so we're going to take a look at those. So one of those barriers that we could run into would be sometimes it's just awkward. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can feel timid about um, joining a new group. Uh, We're we're concerned about being new, not knowing others. And so it's just, that's a barrier for us. And other times it can be that it's just fear of the unknown, uh, fear that we might be rejected. Maybe it's because of things that have gone in and on in our lives when it came to joining a group that uh, it's just not a comfortable fit. And so we have these these fears or uncertainties mm-hmm. about about joining a group. And so that becomes a barrier, an obstacle from, from moving forward. Um, what are some ideas that you have? Well, I think part of that fear of the unknown that you're talking about that moves into just where it's hard to be vulnerable with people. Maybe we're not used to relating to people like that where we don't know if we can trust um, trust them. And we're, we're trying to figure out if we can trust God as well. And so I think that, you know, being vulnerable is difficult at first, but it's very freeing and wonderful when we find a safe group of healthy people that we can be vulnerable with because then we can bring up those deep, dark things that the enemy, you know, likes to <laughs> hold us down with to get out in the open and learn that we can be free with those things. And we, as we get to know God together, he just can um, loosen those things up in us that have had a hold on us. So anyway, I think being vulnerable is very scary, like you said, fear. Um, and then also I was just thinking of the practicality of our calendars being so full like we a lot of us I guess not every personality tape may fill the calendar up like I do but (laughs) I definitely pack my calendar and then you know I have a lot of good things going on but they're not always the best things so I think definitely that's the case for a lot of people they like the idea of joining a group but they look at their calendar and they think how in the world can we fit one more thing in or can I fit one more thing in so that's definitely an obstacle for many people. Definitely a big barrier, indeed. Uh, I, I also think about, uh, you know, sometimes our life circumstances are at such a point that we're, we're even embarrassed about mm. going into a group. Maybe there's been something major that's happened in our life. Maybe we've had a relationship break. Maybe we've had a, a business collapse. Any number of things that, that then going into a group we're going to be exposed or maybe there might be someone there that knows what I've gone through and and it's just embarrassing to to go out or maybe I've had some other change in my life that that I'm still adjusting to Mm -hmm. Uh, it can be something physical and it's just not comfortable so I'm embarrassed uh, to go out and and be in a group especially one that I'm not familiar with And, Mm -hmm. and then there's sometimes when there's just some major event that that puts a barrier Mm-hmm. And and I'm no longer comfortable getting together with people. Think of a pandemic coming through. Hmm. And what if something like that would happen? Let's say that <laughs> randomly happens, and it can it can really be an obstacle for me feeling comfortable getting together with other people. Right. And so I decide, you know, I don't want to take that chance. And. The thing is, uh, these are all very real barriers, and there are any number of others that that really can uh, put a blockade up for us being able to move into community. Yeah. Well, and I know that you and I both um, know the leaders of these groups at Carney E. Free, and we know how amazing they are and how they know 
that they're loved by God in an unconditional way. So again, another barrier is just not really knowing God well enough (laughs) to, to realize that he loves us unconditionally and that we can come as we are. And that would deal with your, what you mentioned uh, as far as the embarrassment barrier goes, if people would really recognize that these are safe groups at Kearney E. Free, that there are leaders that truly know they've been forgiven by God and the depth of that, and you know that they are growing in freedom in Christ, and that, that people that haven't experienced group life before can enjoy that with them. So, you know, I think you're right. It does take that element of pushing past fear first to just get in there. And it takes a little while to get to know people and be known. But it is so worth it. It is so worth it. And to get to know God better together is where that freedom comes. So what would you say are some other ways to see, um, what are some ways to see these obstacles from another perspective? Well, I think, you know, often we can find some balance and discover security, even safety, uh, when we evaluate our perspective. Mm -hmm. When we step back and we we just look at how are we observing what we're at and how are we taking things in? Um, How close or far am I to whatever has put up these barriers to join community? Mm. You know, if I'm right in the midst of it, sometimes my, my vision is clouded. I can't see uh, the forest because of the trees. Mm. And there are other times when I step back and I, I, you know, can see it better. Or other times I get so far away from it, I just ignore the situation and try to move forward um, without it. And so um, I think it's helpful. I know it's helpful mm. uh, to go to the Bible and let it help coach me mm. on God's perspective. and. The Bible is packed with situations in which writers remind us of God's love, care, and guidance for us. And we see it over and over. While the situation may be different, while it may be speaking to a specific incident or a specific nation or a specific time, um, and others may stretch beyond what we're even at at this point in history, they still have those principles and those insights that help us understand God's heart for us. and. I, I wonder, I, I think it'd be good for us to look at mm. um, some verses and just see what we can draw from those. Um, the one that came to mind for me was Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I, I think sometimes we try to think on God's behalf. Yeah. And when we really need to get our eyes fixed up on him this way, then it's amazing how the what feels like huge problems to us in this world become small and you realize that he's got it, that he's got the big plan. That's so I love sure. that verse. There's also um, Romans eight eighteen and 37 through 39. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Those are some major obstacles there. Mm. Those are some things that could really trip us up. And some of those things that are impacting the lives of people here in this, this podcast right now. They are dealing with some of these very issues. They're right in the midst of them. And they're wondering, how could I move forward at all? Mm. How can I think about joining a group when I'm, I'm not even really convinced with where I am in terms of God. And, and this lays it out so neatly that there's such a depth to our caring God and the work of Jesus Christ on our behalf that we can see God's love and allow room for it to unfold within our lives and just watch him do his work. And a lot of times that is much easier to see when we're doing life with other people mm. who are also concerned and caring and loving us 
through our situation. Yeah, we need reminders from each other, from people who also know God and turn their eyes up to God. And we need our, what Adrian talked about, um, how we have to, like Ben and her lifting up the arms to pray for battle victory. You know, we need these these group members to do this, these people that we pick for our spiritual family to hold up our arms and we hold up theirs. So Romans 2, or 12, 2, we'll read that one too. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I just think of Philippians 4, 8, too, like to fill our minds with what is pure and lovely and right and true. And so if we're doing that again, as in our group life and our life groups, we can totally help each other do that or ask for prayer and ask, you know, just text somebody or call somebody even when you're not in the middle of group and say, help, <laughs> you know, help me think about what's pure and lovely and true and right. And that's what groups do for each other. That's what the group members are for each other is yeah. to lift the eyes up. That's right. And, you know, the <laughs> mind is such a, a powerful tool for Satan to use. Mm. You know, if, if he can get into our mind... The battleground, right? He can begin to distract us. He can make us feel heavy. He can cloud our vision and really place mind games on us. Mm -hmm. And um, so when we are within community, a lot of times they can help us regain perspective. They can help us get our mind back on the right track. And, and we offer so many different types of life groups mm. here at eFree that... Uh, really, um, if that's even a specific issue, if mm -hmm. you have had battles with the mind even, we have groups that specifically mm. help come alongside you in in those types of issues. Oh, for and sure. um, you mentioned earlier about the great leaders that we have and the heart that they have. And some of them even target very specific areas in their group uh, because of their background. Mm -hmm. And it really speaks from their heart. And uh, so they can even help us move our mind to being on the right track and uh, think on that which brings uh, honor and glory to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I That's think um, also of Second Corinthians 4, verses 16 to 18 was another one that hit me. Uh, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that mm. far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal. Oh, that is so good. And that hits um, at, strikes at the heart of when we're fearful again, because we worried about our bodies getting older or getting sick or there, and there are some really hard things that we go through in this world. But when our eyes are on the unseen and we remember that it's really temporary, that eternity awaits and there's so much more, then we can gain endurance and perseverance and, and endure the trials that life has. And again, when we have people around us, we're better together for that again. And, and that's what makes us able to endure. We need each other as well as to remember God's big plan. That's right. So Colossians 3, 1 to 3 says, Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. So more of that perspective. That's right. Just really having that eternal, eternal perspective in what we do. Uh, so often the, the instant, the tyranny of the instant, mm -hmm. um, is what really grasps our heart and mind when really... God says he wants himself to grasp our heart and mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, these, these couple of passages here just really help um, accent that. Mm -hmm. First Peter 5, verses 7 to 10 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Mm -hmm. Be alert and of sober mind. 
Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Mm -hmm. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in in Christ, Mm -hmm. after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Mm. Such rich verses there about, again, being aware of what's going on around us in terms of Satan's uh, work to really hunt us down and to use our life circumstances and, and cause us to even not realize or forget that there are people all around this world going through the same types of things. And yet, I think also, the book of Hebrews, mm-hmm. where it tells us that even in Jesus, we have a high priest who understands what we go through mm-hmm. because he himself uh, went through life as well. And then it draws us back to saying, standing firm in the faith. And just, you know, I think of our groups and I think about how it says in this passage about there are other people going through the same types of sufferings. Yes, mm-hmm. they're not identical. But everyone has challenges in their lives, some seen, some unseen to the public. Mm -hmm. But when we're walking through our faith together, it really begins to to help us move forward for not not just for ourselves, but for God's glory. And, you know, it's this whole eternal perspective that that comes into play here. And and Peter, as he writes to his audience, really has a great perspective here on what can help us be strong and firm Mm -hmm. and steadfast. And really the family of believers and God himself says he's a strong tower and a refuge, but the church that he is building up is a strong tower and a refuge for us. So we, we sense that when we come in on a big Sunday morning worship celebration and teaching time, but we really sense that when we get in those small groups with each other that of people that really have our backs and they are helping to fight off the enemy's lies against us. And we are together, again, I, and you see that in First Peter 5, 7 to 10 that you just read, really strongly showing how um, we can resist him as we stand firm together in faith. Yeah, when, you know, when we started looking at these obstacles and barriers, mm-hmm. um, you know, we looked at, you know, okay, so what scripture tell us? And, and um, you know, sometimes it's because we're too close. Sometimes we try to remove ourselves from our situation. And so we just, we don't get productive then because um, we, we're ignoring our situation sometimes. Uh, another thing that we can battle with is being willing to recognize reality. Um, and, and in some cases, even having to forfeit drama that's maybe begun to crep into our lives and our situations and has even become a barrier to, to uh, a, becoming a part of a, a community like a life group. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's when we, we take time to look at the rational side of things, the, the real side of things, rather than um, what we might be imagining, rather what um, Satan wants to place in our minds and, and to build the drama and, and all that really keeps us from being with others. And so I think that's when it comes to looking at getting the right perspective. Um, one of those things is just looking at things in a realistic perspective. And when we are in a group together with others who have really a heart for us, um, mm. that really helps position us to begin to separate um, the unreal truth from the, for the real. Yeah, yep, exactly. Yeah. So good. Yeah. You're, you know, I've heard Satan's the master of smoke and mirrors. And so if we do have this tribe around us of believers, mm-hmm. we're able to identify those things much more quickly as you're saying. And we need that. We need that. We are in battle. We are in a battle in this world. So, and like you said, it's really, it's in our mind first and foremost, because if, if God can convince us in our mind of what's true, then that's our actions follow. If Satan convinces us that what he says are, is true, his lies are true, then we follow after that and we have no peace and we have no um, understanding of eternal perspective. 
Very good. Yeah. You know, another aspect of, of perspective that we can have would be um, just understanding the purpose and the value of community. Um, and, and part of that is also uh, having that perspective that when we join community, it's not just for ourselves. It's, it includes helping others as well. When mm-hmm. we step into a community, we are speaking into each other's lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, it shouldn't be a, a culture of condemning one another, being judgmental and all, but it should be a case where, you know, just like when Scripture speaks of iron sharpening iron, you know, it's that setting where in which there is some, some rubbing off of, on each other and, and um, helping shape, helping spiritually form one another. And so when we see the purpose or the value of community and, and that it, it's not just us going to be fed or us going to, to get our, our issues taken care of or, or um, just us spiritually growing, it's how can we come alongside one another, whatever our entry point is. Mm -hmm. You can be someone who's new in the faith, Mm -hmm. and you can have an unbelievable impact on someone who's been in the family of God for decades. Mm -hmm. But the way you bring a freshness to that relationship with Christ really can help charge an established believer to begin growing again to get mm-hmm. fresh again in God's word. And so even if you're someone who's out on the fringes of the faith and just wanting to find out more, or you're someone who's new in the faith, mm-hmm. uh, does not mean that you cannot bring value into that community. Um, so it's it's finding value in that whole uh, construct of, a, in a sense, becoming a family mm-hmm. in that life group. And, um, you know, really, that is a major part of getting the right perspective of joining community. Well, and, you know, it's amazing to me that at Carney E. Free that we have over half of our congregation that has plugged into a life group. But what that also means is there's a lot more who might be feeling lost in the crowd that would like to be known in community but are facing some of these obstacles we've been talking about. So um, w- there's a lot of room, more room for growth, and we want everybody to feel like they can walk into a group and find family. So what are some of the steps a person can take toward a community who might be struggling or wrestling with joining a life group? Yeah, I think one step would be um, to, to pray for strength, uh, to pray for an open heart and for an understanding of God's care. You know, God does care for us, Mm -hmm. uh, but he needs our heart to be open Mm -hmm. and receptive to him. And, um, you know, once our hearts are open toward him, we may still need the strength to go through it. You may have someone who has been a believer, has been a Christ follower for ages, uh, but still lacks strength to get through what is the next day for them Mm -hmm. uh, because they are so heavily burdened with something in their life right now. Maybe it's the anguish over a loved one or, um, or some other factor in their life. And it's so heavy on them that even as a strong follower of Christ, they lack the strength at that time. So mm-hmm. praying for strength, an open heart, uh, for God's care to be um, both expressed and for us to observe it. Do you think, it, is it okay um if somebody kind of tries life groups out, different life groups, or do you think somebody should just join one and stick with one? I, I think you should always only stick with them. I don't <laughs> think there's any room. You try it one, you're stuck. <laughs> okay, Todd. <laughs> what do you really think? <laughs> no, in fact, in fact, the way we have it set up um, really opens the door for you to try to find what is a good fit. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, if you're trying uh, one of our... our uh, life groups that, for instance, meets uh, in a home or at a cafe or whatever. Um, and um, when, when we're trying to find a good fit for you to, to join a group, often we'll try to give you a couple of options initially to, for you to go and visit. And so, for instance, that life group leader, when they reach out to you, they know that they're inviting you to come and visit their group. And so you may visit it 
two, three times. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we try to see that you've got maybe another option that you go and visit. And you may visit them a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And and try to find a good fit. Because we also want to help you find balance, too. We don't want you in five different groups. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you mentioned earlier, one of the barriers sometimes could be our calendar is so mm -hmm. full. Well, a lot of things on our calendar don't need to be there, which would include five different life groups. So how would you describe a healthy balance for somebody here at E-Free? Yeah. You know, here at E-Free, we encourage people to be, to pick one of each of several areas of stepping into your faith before you get involved in two. So worship, mission, or serving mission, yep. and life group. And community, yeah, yeah community. exactly. Not You don't need five different worship services, mm -hmm. and you don't need um, three different missions you're engaged in, and then all of a sudden you're never in community. And you don't need lots of community, mm -hmm. and you never go and put your faith into practice by stepping out in mission, mm -hmm. doing something on Christ's behalf. Mm -hmm. So we might come on Sunday and get to hear a great message to chew on through the week and apply and worship together and see the family of God together, lifting hands to God. Yeah. And then we might serve in children's ministry or women's ministry. I'll give a plug for that. Care ministry, um, cafe, whatever it is, greeters. Um, and then pick one of those. And then we make sure that we get into a small group of believers that we can be sharpening and encouraging and caring for each other. So, and then I know our group options are, we've got college and career singles. We have our men's groups and our care groups, our women's groups and our out of building life groups, um, in home groups. So there's all kinds of group opportunities that are possible to be a part of. Um, so what are the ways that a person might be able to say, hey, I'm interested, help me start to find a group? You know, there are several very simple steps. Um, one is you can just simply go to our website, carneyfree.com, and under next steps, you can uh, go to a button that has to deal with um, joining a group and uh, walk through it that way. But there are a couple of ways that really are, are much easier and can actually help you find a, as good of a fit as anything. And that would be um, to stop by the Better Together kiosk, uh, the area that we have in the main hallway. Mm -hmm. um, another would be to, to call or me email either myself or uh, Marianne hey. Pavin. Um, you could reach out directly to, if there's someone that you know that leads a certain type of ministry, um, you know, it might be uh, Carrie Carpenter here with me. You might uh, email her or call her. Um, we have uh, Aaron Ferguson with uh, the college and career aged um, uh, people as well. Um, and then uh, Brian Klein would be uh, men's groups especially. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can always reach out to us directly. And um, really often that's about as easy, going through one of those mm -hmm. steps, the kiosk or, or reaching out to us, and we can help find you a good fit. And we, we cross-pollinate. So mm -hmm. if we have a discussion with you and we think it'd be good uh, for you to talk to one of the other ministry leads because really what you're describing is, is well fit under their area, we will direct you to them. We'll say, hey, we really need you to be connected with this person's ministry and we'll see that the connection is made and um, you know it really is pretty easy to get connected well and we know that this is God's prescription for hope and health in our life and a flourishing thriving life so we are 100% um, believers in that and yeah. in God's plan in this way so for parting words here is there any last thought you'd like to leave the listeners with well, one would be we are better together. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are better here, together. Here. And, um, <laughs> you know, while the struggle's real, you know, one thing that comes to mind is the steps are attainable. Mm. If you are not engaged in community here through eFree, you're, you're attending here either newly or you've been coming for, for much of your life. Um, 
these steps of stepping into community are very attainable. And, and as, as I think through the things that we've been talking about here today, you know, it's encouraging. I, I see there's a lot of hope in what's been offered here in, in terms of looking at our perspectives, um, obstacles, being real about those, and just seeing these steps that we could take. Um, really, it, it gives hope. And uh, I really believe that that those that are listening in mm-hmm. now, that they're not engaged in community, um, they will find very quickly that we are better together. Mm-hmm. I agree. And, you know, those things that Todd mentioned that you can do on a Sunday morning to come sign up, but also we just really want to emphasize that there are amazing leaders throughout this church body that are mature in the Lord. They love God. They love people and they will help as well. So they'll help if you ask them how to start getting connected into something, they'll, they could be a great conduit to um, getting you involved in a group as well. So it's been really good to talk about these things with you today and great to have this conversation, Todd. Thanks for inviting me.